Hey everybody, Mr. Kolu here. Today we're going to look at one of the concepts in geometry, one that will probably follow you all the way throughout Euclidean geometry, and that is the concept of a perimeter. And let's start with a definition like we usually do. The perimeter is the distance around a two-dimensional space. Okay, some of those words are easy, like distance and around. Two-dimensional, I think I like 2D movies, like the flat versus 3D movies that pop out at you. And then space, I, can, I guess we can kind of think of as a shape. So an easy definition for perimeter would be the distance around a flat shape. And one of the best ways to think about perimeter is to think about, well, a farm on a sunny day. And there's the old farmer, and he's got a field that he wants to set up for planting corn. He also wants to build a fence around the field to keep the animals from the farm from eating his crops. His neighbor, the young farmer, also wants to set up a new field. He wants to grow carrots. He also wants a fence around those carrots to protect his crop from the other animals on his farm. Both of these farmers find themselves in a similar position. They need to know how much fencing they'll need, and they need to know how many seeds they'll need to fill the entire area. So the question is, which one of these represents perimeter? If you said the fence, you're correct because the fence has to go around the entirety of the field. And remember our definition for perimeter. It's the distance around a flat space. But how do we figure that out? Well, luckily the old man's a little old school. He's got himself an old school tape measure. He's gonna take that tape measure and he's gonna walk around the edge of the perimeter, measuring it. And when he gets back, he's gonna take a look at the tape measure and read how far the tape measure has been extended. And in this case, it's going to be 80 feet. Now, the young farmer has the same question on his mind. How much fencing does he need? But he also wants to be a little bit smarter about this. So what he's going to do is grab his tape measure, and he's going to measure first the right side, and then he's going to measure the top side. And he's going to take those measurements and write them down in a notebook. But he recognizes the shape he's drawn down. He knows that's a rectangle. And in a rectangle, the opposite sides are congruent, or the same. So he knows that if this side is 9, then the opposite side is also going to be 9 feet long. And if the top is 13 feet long, well, the bottom is also going to be 13 feet. So he's going to go ahead and take all those numbers, add them up, and he finds out the perimeter of his field is 44 feet. And they both run down to the hardware store to put in their orders for fencing. What you just saw there were two different methods for determining the perimeter of a field. You saw the old man's method, which was a bit more brute force. He just went around and measured the whole thing. And then he had the young man's approach, which was more thoughtful. And he came up with some strategies to save himself some time. Both methods work just fine. And to reiterate, perimeter is the distance around a flat shape. Okay? And you can think about that as a fence. You know, when I was a kid, I used to think about it as like an army camp, and you always had the guard posts. They were around the perimeter. So whatever works for you, just find a way to remember it and remember it. Okay, let's look at some examples. What is the perimeter of the figure below? Well, it looks like we've got a triangle there. So I'm going to do this sort of the old-fashioned way and just measure the sides. So the first one, I've got 10 and a half inches. The second one, I've got 6 and a half inches, looks like. And the third one looks about five and a half inches. We add all that up together and we get 22.5 inches, the total perimeter for the shape. Okay, just that simple. Take all the sides, measure them, and add it up. Take a look at another example. What is the perimeter of the figure below? Okay, this one looks a little different. Same rules apply. We just take the measurements and we add them together. We add that all together, and that gives us 28 feet. Just that simple. All right, let's take a look at a slightly more complicated example here. What is the perimeter of the isosceles trapezoid below? Okay, an isosceles trapezoid, and this is the information they're going to give us. Well, wait a minute. Seems like they left out something. Okay, in these situations, you have to look at the question really closely. Because I tell you... Your teacher does make mistakes and leave stuff off the quiz, maybe like one out of a hundred times, but the other 99 times has something to do with the question. So look at the key word up there, 
isosceles trapezoid. What is an isosceles trapezoid? Guaranteed there's something important about an isosceles trapezoid that's going to help us answer this question. So let's head on over to the library, take a look at one of the old textbooks they have there on geometry, crack it open, and there we have a picture of an isosceles trapezoid. A lot of kids see this and they kind of freak out, but I love these diagrams because they tell you so much about the figure without having to say any words. So take a look. Let's take a look at those two green marks on the side that, that just turned purple. Okay, what those guys are telling me is that those two sides, the left side and the right side, are the same length. Okay, and that's true of all isosceles trapezoids. Pretty neat, huh? Take a look at those two triangles. What that's saying is that the top there is parallel to the bottom. And if you don't know what parallel means, that means if we extend these lines on out forever, they'll never cross each other. They'll never get any closer to each other, any further apart. In fact, it's just like train tracks. And that's how a lot of people think about parallel lines. What else is on this diagram? Well, they've got the markings there for the angles. So the two red semicircles on the bottom side of the drawing, those are telling us that those two angles are actually congruent. They have the same measurement. Same deal with the angles at the top there they're shown to be congruent. Sometimes you'll see tick marks on the angle congruency marks. And again, that's just another technique to help you match up congruent angles. But the important part of this diagram, the part that we're looking at it for, is the part there on the sides of those hash marks, telling us that those two sides are congruent. Since those two sides are congruent, we can go back to our problem. And if this side is congruent to this side, and that side is nine miles, well then this side is nine miles. And now we can just go ahead and add up those measurements. That gives us a total of 40 miles. And that's the perimeter of that isosceles trapezoid. Okay, just that simple. Let's take a look at another example. Okay, what is the perimeter of the figure below? Well, this one looks a little different. Okay, there's the information they've given us. I don't know, there's a lot of numbers to add there. I mean, we probably could just add them all. But wait, we should probably take a look back at the definition. Okay, the distance around a flat space, a fence. Think about where you'd want to build a fence to keep people out. You don't want to have a fence inside of your shape. So, hmm, okay, around. And this actually is really easy to do. I would take your finger, and I used to tell my kids to do this, and just trace it around the outside of the figure. Anything you've traced is part of the perimeter. And those numbers there are the numbers you're going to use to calculate it. So we'll take those numbers, and we'll add them up, and that gives us a total perimeter of 33 inches. Pretty neat, huh? All right, well, pretty good job there. See, perimeter's no big deal as long as you just remember what the word means. And uh, well, we kind of finished on our schedule there and I haven't heard anything from Ugh. Okay, well, here's that stretch it question. Well, it's good, you know, I mean, stretch it questions usually teach us a little bit more about what we're learning about, so we want to learn it, right? All right, let's take a look at this. If the square below has a perimeter of 24 inches, how long is one side? And they give us this drawing. Wait, that's it? Okay, well remember, if the drawing doesn't show us enough, we should probably look back at the question. And oh wait, there's a green word there screaming out at me. Square, yeah, they're calling this figure a square. We know a lot of things about squares, right? We know that all four sides of a square are the same. And we also know that all four angles are the same. They're all 90 degrees but I don't really care about angles right now. All I'm really focusing on are the side lengths because I'm trying to calculate perimeter. And I know that all four sides are gonna have the same length, x. Okay, so we can solve this for the perimeter now. The perimeter equals x plus x plus x plus x. Or 4x, right? 24, the perimeter, equals 4x. And then to solve for x, I'm gonna go ahead and divide both sides by four. And if you need to know why I divided both sides by four, I really recommend you check out the uh, videos we have on one-step and two-step equations. Uh, they'll really kind of get to the bottom of this for you. All right, we'll divide both sides by four, and that leaves us with six equals x. Okay? So each of those sides is six inches long, with a total perimeter of 24 inches all the way around. All right, pretty good, guys. So this time we took a look at the outside of a figure, or the perimeter, Next time, we'll take a look inside the figure at the area. All right? Well, thanks very much for coming by. Good luck with all your math endeavors in the future, and I'll catch you guys next time. Take it easy.